Take a look what came in today. Starlink. Here in northern Wisconsin, the uh, beta has been active. I had signed up a few times with different email addresses, and finally, uh, last Thursday night, Friday night, got an invite to join the beta program. Uh, ordered it within an hour, and uh, so today, I think it was Friday night. Got it Tuesday night. Or Tuesday. So I ordered the Volcano roof mount because I plan on installing it on the roof and I also ordered a pole mount. I'm not exactly sure if I want to put it on a pole yet. I have, I have the option to put it on a pole on the roof or if I want to just attach it directly to the, the roof using the, the roof mount. Uh, so I bought both. Uh, with the amount of snow we get here it might be good to get it on a pole to get it up a little bit so we don't have any snow covering the, the dish or the dishy McFlat face, I think it's called. So, we'll open up the volcano roof mount, see what's in there. Feels like the rubber pads. Hardware. Yep, screws, a bunch of clips to hold the wire down, which is good, I could use that. The mount, three six holes. And oh, some kind of case. And then some leg bolts or leg screws which I actually can use for um, there's two long ones for the interior ones and then four short ones for the exterior ones instructions the carrying bag this is a carrying bag for must be for this, this the dish cool So that's that. My goal right now is to kind of get it installed temporarily uh, until we get the. I might try to get it up on the roof. I've got an idea how to get it up there temporarily, clamp it down until I get the pole mount. Um, ultimately, I've got idea where this. So the cable that comes with the Starlink is 100 feet long. The Cat 6 um, powered cable that powers the. The receiver 100 feet long so I can I'm able to get it in a spot that I need it I've got an idea how to route it there okay all right so let's open up the actual dish so a couple pieces of tape here there one there Big old instructions. I've already watched plenty of videos on this already, so I know what's going on. So I don't really need them. There it is. Tripod mount for on the sur hard surface. Uh, don't know if I'll use it, but we'll see. And Ethernet cables already plugged in. Some nice thick ones, unbranded. A modem, router, all of the above. Nice packaging. They did a good job. 100 foot powered cable. I'll take this all out. I don't need to move it all. He's got to tape the dish. Then. Cool. 
Apple. So we'll, uh, we're gonna get a little time. I'll get her hooked up temporarily and see how she works. I'm kind of excited. I'm looking forward to it. It's stuck on DSL and not the fastest in the world. Parts and pieces. So we'll see you when we get there. Okie dokie, we're up here on the roof. We have the Starlink dish in its permanent position. Up on the roof, I just set it in its final home. I just got to wire up the, taped on the wire. We ha I had it installed on a 10 foot pole the last couple days and I found it and I just got this uh, pole mount in from Starlink or from SpaceX, which fits over any pipe, I think up to two and a half inches in diameter. Got it installed, it's in the auto auto level or self-leveling. Now it's, it's, I believe it's searching for satellites right at the moment. It'll find them here in a little bit. Because I just moved it, it was just sitting on its tripod right there. I just set it on top. So in a few moments it'll reorientate itself and set up. So what I've got going is this is just a one and a quarter inch galvanized pipe from Lowe's structural pipe and then a fitting that's sitting on top of the eave and then a swivel base joint on the bottom. I actually ended up getting the volcano roof mount as well with it. And I used the rubber that came with it and put it to seal the underneath the pad here. Then the wire is just going in the attic right there. And then I've got it running through the attic, across the top, through the attic, all the way across over here. And then somewhere down below my finger over there in the corner, it goes down into the basement through a piece of conduit. And that's where I have the power supply. This cord is 100 feet long or so. And it actually reaches, I could use about another 20 feet. So I'm gonna see if I can get a, an extension or a coupler or something. But right now I've got it working. And then I made my own land cable. They go from the power supply up the power brick to go where my networking is in the basement. So I'll take you down there in a little bit as soon as I can get this all buttoned down. Here is the pole mount, and all it is is just a bigger pipe with six set screws all the way around. Then you can slide the smaller pipe underneath, and the set screws dig into it. And then it just uses the standard connection connection piece for the for the uh, dish. All right, so after a couple minutes, it uh, orients itself, finds the satellite, connects, and and that's good to go then. So I got it moved, got her settled up. So I had to get it up a little bit so I could fight these the trees, the top of those trees right there. And then I've got another big white pine way over here that I had to get over that it kind of is in the way of. Uh, so we'll see. Cutting it down three and a half feet compared to what it was before. Um, I had really good set reception before with it on a 10 foot pole. So if it end up, ends up being too short, I guess I'll get another 10 foot pole and put it back up high. I was just worried about too much wind load. With it angled like that a little bit, we get some high winds coming up over top of the house sometimes and 
they want to rip it off. So we'll try it here for now and go from there. So I'll take you inside here in a little bit and show you the rest of the connections. So pretty, pretty, pretty simple process to get it hooked up. All right, I'm gonna do this the old fashioned way. Just videotape my screen, TV. Uh, hopefully it looks okay. But so I've got the uh, satellite map that space website up. Just checking out the satellite coverages. I'm in this kind of the green dot area here in northern Wisconsin. This is a test that I just ran, the speed test. And check it again. Latency's been pretty good in the uh, 20 to 45, 50 range. Been pretty happy with it. So here we go, hitting around 115, 115 megabytes per second. So you look here in my results history, it was a 155. 183 down here on the 17th, another 183. I'm pretty happy with those numbers. It's way, it's a breath of fresh air going from DSL to this. We'll do one more. See, there must be a different satellite or something that's connected, so it's a little slower this time around. Let's see if there's another one in uh, something in Minneapolis. This. Let's go to Indianapolis, Indiana. Indiana. Ping's going to be a little higher. Not bad, 31 milliseconds. There's a 160s, 171. I'd imagine it all depends on what ground station you're we're connected to at the time. That's where the ping is going to be the most deciding factor. There's two ground stations around me. And maybe I'm going to pee at Pennsylvania too. Who knows? Let's try. Go to Madison. Twenty nine milliseconds. That's a good one. One seventy one. Let's say the average for the upload is around eighteen to twenty, fifteen to twenty megabytes per second, which I'm completely happy with. So there we go. Pretty cool stuff. Okay, so this is where the uh, cable comes down from the satellite dish. It comes down, and I've got it sitting here in the furnace in my laundry room, just up on a on the top of the wall, plugged in to an outlet. That's as far as it'll go. Then I've got my own Ethernet cable going into it which then goes from there into the furnace room where I have all my uh, networking stuff at and we'll go there next all right so then this is the cable that comes from the power block in the other room just a cat 5e I probably might look into getting a cat 6 so a little more bandwidth but it's been doing pretty well so far I've been able to get almost 180 megabyte download, download speeds 
And then I just I like to have it. I've got the Wi-Fi going off of the router that came with from Starlink. Then I also have the using the aux port off the back going into my network switch to the rest of the house for how they'll hide hardwire. And I've been really happy with it so far. I've been able to get some speeds that have been around uh, averaging 120 to 140 megabyte download speeds. I've seen 180, but seen in the 60s and 70s and 80s as well. It, it varies as the day goes on and the satellite coverage and such. One or two outages a day, not too much. It's been pretty consistent, so I've been pretty happy with it. So I'll get this video uploaded with Starlink, and I uh, hope you guys have a good one. Bye-bye.